Okay. Uh, thanks, man, for introducing me, and I thank the committee for uh, giving this opportunity. I am Dr. Pranit Pillala. I am a family physician and medical innovator. So, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. So, something like when I say my pronouns is so certainly for a lot of people it is what is this? What is there in this? Creating a mental safe spaces, training healthcare providers in LGBTQIA plus in primary health. What exactly it is? Why are we discussing about LGBT? What? What's? Uh, before I jump into this, can I ask, like, if you have experience seeing a trans person in your clinics or LGBT communities? Okay. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So, being a physician, we are open to deal with them. We are like you know, by looking at a person, they say, oh, they will judge us. We don't go there. But how we are being a family physician, give that confidence to the person that we are there for you. You can come to me. So it's always about unlearn, relearn, unlearn, and relearn. That was my life since 2017. So today's my presentation is about why and how I created this and why did I do this and what changes have been made. Uh, so uh, before we do this, can I ask if you know what is gender identity means? What is sexual orientation means? What is gender expression is? So these are the something like it's very important for us to know the culture of a person before we approach them. We can't just say that if a person is appearing like, like a man, we can't say they are men. There is something else. So it is important for us to... Thank you. So, uh, instead of... Uh, yeah, this is my objectives. I would like to take you through the journey of my uh, creating this uh, mental safe spaces and a case presentation with the learnings and what is my future directions. Before I jump into everything, I would like to uh, take you to a slide which gives us idea what exactly is gender. Can I go to the back slide? It's not going to back. Back. I, I feel like you know, if let us discuss for some time what exactly it means, then we go into the presentation and gives us more clarity. Uh, no, no. Can you come to the slide next? 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 Uh, 21. This one. Yes. Yes. So, there's a human. There is something called gender identity, sexual orientation, biological sex and gender expression. The word biological sex means the person by birth with what genitals they have been born. Male and female. Baby girl, baby boy. So that is called biological sex. But something gender identity is in my mindset, mindset how would I identify myself as? That is what gender identity Maybe I am a, look wise I am looking like a man, but maybe I am a female. My identity, identity as female. Certain people they say I don't identify as a male, I don't identify as a female. I am none. So that is what gender identity is. Sexual orientation means the person sexually to whom they get attracted to. They could be a gay, lesbian, bisexual, both. Some people they say I don't get attracted to any, I am a side. So that is what uh, sexual orientation. Gender expression is how do I appearance myself and how do I make sure how I look to the audience or look to the people. That is expression. So I could be masculine, feminine, I wear a sari, I wear a dress, it could be anything. So uh, because of cultural humility at times, you know, there are a lot of um, unconscious biases happens in, within us. 
So it is very important for us to understand this. Okay. Can we go to the first slide? So this is what uh, I just want to give. Make sure the uh, terminology is. I can use this. So my journey has started in the year 2017 with incorporation of PCM Institute of Health. I started with uh, HIV primary care. So started seeing a lot of HIV positive people and noticed uh, many of uh, gay communities people were coming to the clinic. So after knowing that we uh, arranged monthly uh, awareness programs within clinic and later on one of the colleges hospitals Ramaya Hospital in uh, Bangalore has invited me how to deal a trans person who is HIV positive. That's where I felt like okay why so far I have not seen even one transgender in my clinic. Everyone knew that you know our clinic is LGBT friendly, it is one of the well known clinics but why the T is missing. So we went to the ground level to understand what's happening with the T, why they are not coming. So with that findings, this with that learnings, we have approached a Grand Canada challenge to raise funds for transgender community to provide the medical services. Through this, that program is called MITA. Through the MITA program, we have done training sessions uh, with gender and sexuality inclusive care program to the medical professionals. Then later on, uh, there is an unheard um, organization where the mentoring program for 11th and 12th grade kids. They were like, okay, we want to spend some time with doctors and know whether we like to be a doctor or not. So there are a lot of students have come to us and they have chosen each person. One of my students has did, uh, wanted to know about LGBT community because it's something new for him, for hearing that lesbian, gay at that age. He wants to know a lot. So he has done online survey within his high school and the learning, the outcomes of that was surprising, shocking for me as well. So with that learnings, um, a family uh, planning association of India, we have uh, run a program, uh, integrative transgender primary health because we have seen that a lot of trans people they are going to other uh, 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 medical physicians, allopathic or you know um, homeopathic doctors or Ayurveda physicians. So it is very important to integrate all together. Uh, the moment the person says trans, they just think HIV, STI, LGBT community, sexually health in, uh, in problems. The person, the trans person enters into the clinic, we think, okay fine, what's your problem? I have a fever, I have this, I have a burning maturation, when was the last time you had sex? So that is what unconsciously we bias ourselves and go straight to the point based on their appearance. So it's very important to think as a primary healthcare instead of focusing on an STI. That's what the program we did and this is what the journey from 2017 to 2021 and I would uh, show you the outcomes of each. When we went to the ground level of transgender community, I asked them why you are not coming. My priority is to treat you, to provide non-judgmental care. I don't judge, I like you people, please come. They are like, doctor, your priority is to treat me, but my priority is not health. So it is very important for us to be a physician, family physician, to understand the objectives of the patient, the priority of the patients and our objectives. And until we match to that, you know, there is no proper outcome. So that's where I was like, till, the, till I met them, my opinion on transgender was entirely different. After going, meeting them, they were like, you are a doctor, how, how, what made you to think to come to our community, to our houses and inquire about it? I have never seen a doctor doing it. I was like, I'm a family physician, it's my responsibility to understand what is a ground level problem is. So they said that they come out of house when they are very young, 12 years, 13 years, and they go onto the street, they beg, and they meet their own community. That's where, when in a kid, any trans person comes, we need to ask who are their supportive group, who are their chosen families. So uh, we always say is that you know, there is a one thing where we can't choose our family. That's a, by God, by whatever it is, by birth, our parents are there. But for trans people, there are something called chosen family is. So their birth parents will be different, but later on their real, like, you know, chosen family is different. So it's important to understand what is their chosen family is. So they said that we don't have food, we don't have shelter, we don't have clothing. 
so that is our priority needs are then safety we don't know who attacks us when they kill us when abuses you know the safety is the next important employment caring people then they said sex is like least important as we are unemployed we don't have any job opportunities we are forced to do this for our daily needs and every day every time when they have sex they feel depressed so they go in at each level since the childhood discrimination trauma so it's very important for us to be more sensitive when we deal trans people because the moment we see trans people they very harsh they speak so i mean rude and the way they use the words the way they don't have ethical politeness and all that's just because they have gone through since the childhood continuous trauma and they have molded themselves in a way so that no one attacks them health has come in the last priority because they say that our age expectancy is somewhere around 60 years and we take hormonal medications no doctor knows how to give hormonal therapy for us we go ourselves uh, to the market and take ocps and there are a lot of side effects they smoke they drink they take drugs and uh, they have a higher tendency of you know, having diabetes so having all this complication they uh, um, um you know life expectancy is low they are like okay for who for who we should go for take a pill is it for you society or is it for us we have no family members we are not bothered about how long we survive so we will be like this let us die so health is our least priority and they also said that we don't have money and we can't take break for them it's like in the mornings they have to beg in the evenings they have to do sex again they come in the morning they have to do uh, begging and then they have to go for sex so it is like continuous there is no break no if they take at least like because for a sex they get like 100 to 200 rupees if they do unprotected sex they get like 500 rupees so with this money they are like they can't survive so if i come to your clinic will you do it fast you will take consultation fee you uh, you spend like you know 2 hours 3 hours whole day we have to spend if i don't work on that day i can't get my food so as this is for so that's why we have uh, written a grand challenge kanda and we won the award this mitra program is mainly to navigate the community to the healthcare by reaching a gap between this with the community health leaders champions so this is what we did navigated and this are the we have identified one location we have taken in bangalore identified multiple doctors who were willing to provide uh, lgbt care in their clinics so we formed a group and training was happened and the gender and sexual inclusive care is a peer leading program and the aim of the program is creating safe spaces and support system it was online five months of course and these are the content what we covered um so as i said you know the moment we see lgbt or trans community we think about the sexual problem it must be but they said no it is what we we want a general physician who looks at as as a human who deals our uh, cold cough vomiting abdomen pain thyroid hypertension dental issues skin issues so surprisingly for them sexual problems is the they and they know very well like what medications to take how to take so they are like we don't have any general physician family medicine physician who looks at us as a person in general and treat so this is what the recommendations has come from the trans and lgbt and sex worker groups then coming to the unheard mentoring program for this uh, 11th and 12th grade um so uh, i don't want to disclose the college or you know the city location because we have not that taken a medical clearance for the study but because the students enthusiastic he wants to know how many of his i mean um, schoolmates are really involved in this so this was online and total 118 people have enrolled the program and uh only 11th and 12th grade students were taken and explain the purpose of this and looking at the data there is a one person who identify themselves as they are not male they are not female imagine that 11th grade or 12th grade person having the maturity of not identifying this is it really a dysphoria do they understand really what is the gender is and there are people who say they are bisexuals they are homosexuals and asexuals so i was like thinking that you know these are the topics even majority of our medical physicians or you know highly educated people will not know but 
kids they are trying to understand through the online and they themselves. So I feel that in the near future there is going to be a huge number of people with this confusion or maybe uh, uh, they know well what it is. So they say that I am a sexual, please deal me. Are we ready to deal? I am a bisexual, please deal. Are you ready to deal? So it is very important for us to know that. Then coming to the um, FBI India Integrated Transgender uh, uh, Primary Health Care, our, it is to mainly to enhance and interest and empower and healthcare uh, providers capacity building. So there are a lot of doctors they say that we don't know how to deal with trans people, we don't know what to ask, how to frame a question and I'm very scared that if I hurt their feelings, do they do anything to me? So that is what and uh, people said that you know the physicians that's why we launched this program to capacity building and it was online and one week program it was this other content and before the session and there are a lot like MBS people and BAMS people and wrote the program and before the session the red one is like before the course where they said that we don't know how to deal with general health, mental health, dealing with transgender problem and sexual and reproductive health is a major thing they don't know how to deal post the program they said that surprisingly seeing the sexual and the reproductive their capacity building has increased a lot. So it is what the family physician is. Family physician means the network, working together, learning, unlearning, relearning together. So that's what the simple uh, uh, things I have done. Can you go next, uh, before slide, one slide better. So with all these learnings, uh, to 19th slide. I would just want to take you through the case scenario. Uh, please don't look at the case, it's okay, it's too big. I'll just simple it. And I have taken one case, um, divided into a three, and let's discuss. So there is a uh, sensitivity test for practice of first time establishing a primary care. So her history, she is known case of high, uh, HIV, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and kidney disease chronic venous stasis, osteoporosis, post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, looking at this, uh, 2001, she underwent a uh, gender affirming re uh, reassignment surgery. Post to that, there were a lot of additions and complications and had a UTI, she tried to commit suicide uh, twice. She has come to your clinic and um, as it is generally we ask, please fill the form. They have given, the receptionist has given the form to fill, where she has filled then the receptionist asked, please can you give me your identity card? That we have the something like, you know, please give me identity card so that I can match it. And unfortunately, the information what the person has written and the identity card do not, did not match. And instead of that, the receptionist, unknowingly or uh, without intention, instead of saying she, she said he. So where the trans person has felt so bad, embarrassed, both of them, and you were there at the situation. The question is, how would you recommend the employee, what would you recommend the staff member to do, and what do you recommend your practical uh, administrators to avoid similar issues in the future? How would you deal the situation? As simple, we say, before slide, it's jumping like two. Before slide. Yeah. Before. Yes. That's simple. We just say sorry. But it should always follow with change in the Soji information. That is what sexual orientation and gender identity information what we say. And the studies has proven saying that having the Soji information in our clinic for homosexual communities have a higher level of a retention rate and confidentiality for the patients but it did not work much with the heterosexual communities because for the heterosexual is we don't ask to whom you get sexually attracted to so soji information works better with the lgbt community but not for heterosexuals and so we say sorry and in front of them itself we have to change update the gender marker in the you know, forms what we have and um, then there should be a change in culture towards diversity, equity and inclusion within us with continuous ongoing cultural competency training programs for, from the frontline staff members till the leader of the association. It should not be separated just for one group of sector. It should be everyone has to be involved and it should be continuous. 
because sometimes we forget things. It's important to re uh, remind people. See, then apologize. Everything is done. You have taken her to the examination room, and you, being a physician, we need to know what questions to ask, mainly to regarding social support. How would you phrase a, a sentence? How would you uh, build a relationship with uh, clients? Any thoughts about this? What, how would you start your conversation? What would you like to ask the trans person? So the trans person already said, I just came here for normal general checkup to establish a relationship. So where do you start? What phrases would you ask? So, avoid assumptions. Because Sita has come with one of the male person and he was sitting. So according to our Indian culture or maybe our you know, uh, mindset, the, the moment the person comes of same age with the women, we just think maybe husband. You know, so don't assume the things. So as a, uh, avoid all assumptions and practice always keep open-minded. So these are the, some of the examples where we can use the questions. Is it okay if I ask you about your support system and personal information including like who is your chosen family, who is your support system and it, um, are there any significant relationships in your life? So, the other, uh, I was attending one of this conference in the US, they were like 72 years women and they ask a lot and they die. So, but it is very important for us, our family physicians, whole, we have to treat a person as a whole, it's our responsibility to ask all the information. And yes, I see a lot of elderly people who are sexually involved. Then, this is what unconscious bias in health, uh, healthcare system, what I'm saying. Assuming and comparison is like, you know, say that one person has come, taking the lover or husband or whatever it is. If we think that is called imp uh, implicit bias. So, pertaining attitudes, beliefs and stereotyping uh, that affects our understanding, action and decision making in an unconscious manner. So, that's why it's important for us to be a, a, a look at our implicit bias and be aware of our own biases. And there is something called implicit association test, which is online for free. And we can do this test frequently where it brings out our unconscious bias and let us know. And doing this current kind of activities in a group, you know, it, it, it uh, increases our practice and also relation building with the patients. So once, uh, yeah, you know what is this and uh, you yeah, have established, then this is something we follow it's not only trans community but it is important for each and every client every patient we greet and take consent we say hi it is uh, my name is uh, you pronounce with the proper name so it's always come whether to say he she it so it's better avoid everything and always call them with their names that's the best so say that hi good morning sita i'm dr so and so i'm here to take care of you so is it okay if I ask you further? So greet them and take a consent. And therapeutic alliance. Therapeutic alliance is something like having an understanding to the patient and to us, like what I'm going to do and what they're going to do to us, like conversations. So we have to take permission. See, being as a profession, it's important for me to ask you personal questions. And I'm going to do this, I'm going to examine you in this way, this I have to address you. So is there certain things which you want to avoid, which you don't want to do or you want to tell me about your past experiences. So by doing this, what happens is we are doing the therapeutic alliance with them. Then comes cultural humility, which means that certain people like, you know, not all trans people are, will undergo surgery. So um, male to female, female to male transition happens. Suppose if um, female to male transition person comes, they say that I'm a man, but I have a uterus. I have vagina, I have breasts, but I identify myself as a man. So, they don't like us to call, shall I examine your breast. So they like to say the word as chest. Okay, so these are the something uh, which we don't know, accept ourselves that we don't know much of the things and ask and learn. So that is what cultural humility is. So find out how would they want to address their body parts as. So knowing that is a cultural humility, and finally, after everything, is there anything else I could help you? Is everything is fine? So asking that would be like a dignity question. So these are the four steps we can follow 
with any patients which increases our uh, patient retention rate and the relationship between the patient and the clients. Go back. So, uh, future uh, 26. My future direction is uh, creating a center for excellency with uh, product development and delivery of a services. The product development is something like holistic non-judgmental care provided with the fellowship program and then create a clinical safe spaces across India which can be affordable and approachable for the services. So at present I have created this in Bangalore. So would, I would like to take this all over with that before slide. 27. Yes. So that center of excellency would like to take across India with uh, the FPI. So we are ready to train your center, your staff, be with you and uh, all this gender and inclusive programs, we can do it to sensitize the staff. And uh, Academy of Family Physicians of India will be the center to create something in India with this. Next slide. These are our team members. Um, we are a huge team in Bangalore. Uh, Rao sir is the uh, main uh, person who trained us, RK and other people. Next slide. I acknowledge my uh, uh, organization who has helped us all to be successful journey. Next. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>